Stay up past your bedtime. Space is proud to sponsor the Midnight Madness program at the 2007 Toronto International Film Festival. At the Witching Hour, get your fill of shocking and rocking films. The Midnight Madness program at the 2007 Toronto International Film Festival, September 6th to 15th. Brought to you by Space. Can you tell me how uh, you two got involved as a uh, writer and director? How did we do it? Well, actually, I was, uh, we're both uh, from Chicago originally. And uh, Stuart had a fantastic uh, uh, theater company there called Organic Theater. And I was a big fan of Stuart's back there. And I liked the Organic Theater because if you ever went to one of Stuart's play, you, you were guaranteed to see a naked woman on stage. <laughs> it was always a guarantee, pretty much, right? Except bleacher bumps, maybe. I don't know. Well, they used to call our theater the Take Off Your Clothes, Scream and Bleed Theater. <laughs> <laughs> but the funny thing is, we never knew each other in Chicago. So I was out here, uh, I'm a big fan of H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, of course, and Stewart is like the, the master of H.P. Lovecraft movies. And we wrote a book, I co-wrote a book with a guy named uh, Andrew Migliori uh, called The Lurker in the Lobby, which is about the adaptations of H.P. Lovecraft, and we interviewed Stewart. And that's how our relationship started, basically. And I, uh, John had written a script that I really liked called Deathbed, which I ended up producing, and uh, and then we got, you know, uh, we, we stayed working together and, uh, and developed a couple of other scripts together. And, uh, you know, this being one of them. Yes, there, sir. Uh, it was, uh, how was the uh, location in uh, New Brunswick and uh, how did it add to the film? It was cold as a well digger's ass. <laughs> <laughs> I live in LA. <laughs> That's true. Um, I don't know. I, uh... I thought the St. John was haunt haunted. I mean, She's it's from Kenya. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was just always cold, and there's a lot of brick, and it's a lot of, I don't know, darkness, you know. And then going to work, and then seeing the blood, <laughs> and then going home to the hotel in the dark. You know, you kind of look around you. I, I don't know. That was my experience in St. John. <laughs> it's kind of freaky sometimes, but it's a great city at the same time. <laughs> September, it's, it, it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. And it's got, you know, all of the trees were changing color. It was just gorgeous. And there's lots of lobster to eat. Stuart loves the lobster. Yeah, I sure do. But uh, by the time it was time that we were going to shoot this movie, all the leaves had fallen off the trees, and it, and it did take on this kind of bleak look, which I think actually you know, works really well for the movie. It's very stark. What else do we have? Another question? Right yes, here. they're over the blue shirt. Uh, the rap song? Well, it was funny because when I was shot the sequence, I was kind of thinking it might, I was going to go something else. And in, a, in one of the earlier versions of it, I, I think I, I used um, Some Enchanted Evening, you know, played like by Montavani or something, you know, really slow. And, um, you know, it, it, it was kind of weird, but it, it, uh, it was so slow, it kind of it didn't really start the movie off in a good way. And, Someone, I think, at one of the screenings suggested the idea of using a rap song, and we tried it, and it was like the the counterpoint between those images of those old guys in the in the rest home, and that music uh, seemed to work, and it was sort of fitting, I think, for the movie because you've got Brandy, who's who's so into that scene, uh, working in the middle of all of this, and you know, it's sort of. I thought it kind of captured that feeling. Yeah, I think it, the music was um, nice in the beginning, so what uplifting in a sense, because at the first time that I actually read the script, because I didn't know that it was a true story, um, I thought it was a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> and I've worked with Stuart before, but I thought, you know, the first couple pages and, and you know, Randy and Mr. Binkley, and oh, this is kind of funny, and where's this going? And then all of a sudden it just went completely down, and it just very intense, so I, I think it was nice to have that, that uh, energy in the beginning. Because yeah, but I mean, it does, it, it ends up being kind of a comedy anyway, you know, uh, and, I have, and I have to say, I mean, I think it's due to a great deal to the actors, you know, the Russell and Rukia, who, who brought so much spirit to it.
down here at the front. Yeah, sorry. Actually, you guys actually pretty much answered it, but I'll, 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 I'll ask it anyway. Um, it was just, um, for the actors, was it ever hard to kind of adjust into the, in, from between the comedy to, to, the, to the gorier scenes? Was there like, did you ever have to get into like a transition mode to kind of calm down the funny part and get into the scary, gory kind of side of things? Well, from, from my standpoint, honestly, I, I look at it, it's, it's all truth. You know what I mean? And, and so, if, if you embrace it as truth, it, it, you know, it, it's, it's an honest moment. It, it's real. And um, whatever they, whatever, however they choose to cut it, however they choose to edit it, that's on there. But I just, when I, when I go into a moment, I go into a scene, I just embrace it honestly. And I try to live in, in a moment, honestly. I mean, it's, it may sound cliche, but that's how you approach it. It's, it's just very honest and it's very truthful. And you try to just live in the moment. And you don't really recognize whether it's supposed to be a, a, a comedic scene or a dramatic scene. You're just saying, like, whatever the words are on the page, let me, live, let, me, let me tell the truth of this moment. And then you live in that, and then you're working with your, your folks, and you well, just have a good time. Well, Russell, you had an image in your mind that you were using, I think, for this character. Do you remember? Oh, the, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, the, um, I had this, my, my image was, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very fond of the Wizard of Oz, <laughs> and so the image that I was running through was uh, uh, the Cowardly Lion. You know, you know, they say, "What makes a king of slaves? Courage. What makes a flag of masterpieces? Courage." in my head throughout. And so whatever the truth is in that, <laughs> I was living it. <laughs> Does that make me not Dorothy then? <laughs> yes. Perhaps. Do we have another question? Uh, yes, sir. The, uh, the irony of the film, of course, the fact that Randy makes her living helping and taking care of people. Is that something you added or is that? No, that was, that was true. true. Yeah. That was actually true. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's a very disturbing story. We can't story. make up this stuff. <laughs> We've got time for here. one more question. We've got a good question somewhere here? A good one. All right, <laughs> pressure's on. Take one more question. <laughs> this is your great answer. Any update on House of Reanimator? Well, um, for those of you who are wondering what that is, it's a, a sequel to Reanimator. Uh, house of Reanimator, the house in question is the White House. And, um, and the person reanimated is Dick Cheney. <laughs> Yeah, now we're, we're kind of running out of time on this one. Um, so, you know, we've been having, you know, it's, it's funny because I get asked about that more than any other project I've ever done, but I cannot seem to raise the money to make it. <laughs> it's, uh, I think there's a real, uh, even though I've got William H. Macy scheduled to play the president, um, and, you know, bring me back the entire reanimator gang, you know, Jeffrey Combs and Bruce Abbott. And uh, Barbara Crampton is the first lady, and my friend George Went is, uh, is the vice president. Uh, but um, the people are so afraid of the political implications that it's, it doesn't, I have a feeling it may not actually become a movie, except in our imaginations. No, no, it will, it will. Well, you know, maybe Canadians could fund it. <laughs> Anyone? Anyone? Well, if you want to leave a little basket at the back of the theater, we do it like church. Yes, right. <laughs> really, thank you very much. Thank Let's you. hear it. Thank you so much.